Okay, so welcome back to this video. In this video, we uh, are looking at a really beautiful problem involving joint probability distributions. Okay, uh, so in the previous video, what we did is we worked out uh, what the probability mass function for a certain number of eggs x hatching is, and it's given by this. What we now want to work out is what's the probability mass function for the other random variable y. So if you remember, we have our probability space here, which is the probability space, um, which is um, the uh, consists of a sample space, and we have this chicken that can lay uh, a certain number of eggs, and it's a non-negative uh, integer number of eggs, so 2, 3, and it goes on. And within each of these events that she lays a certain number of eggs, there are multiple outcomes. So, for instance, that this egg could hatch or not hatch, etc. Okay? Uh, and we had a uh, random variable uh, big Y defined on here, which was ascribing to each outcome uh, the number of the eggs that the chicken laid that did not hatch. So this is 0, uh, 1, uh, 2, 3, etc. Okay, and we want to work out what is the probability that big Y is equal to some little y. Okay, so we want to work out that. And the way we're going to do this is, again, we're going to use the law of total probability. We're going to say that this, it, we're going to partition the set up. Um, we're going to condition, basically, on knowing uh, the number of eggs that the chicken has uh, chicken made. So we're going, to condition, uh, we're going to partition the set up into these events that the chicken laid a certain number of eggs and we're going to say okay we'll work out what the probability of y of big y being little y given that that event has happened so we now view this entire probability this entire this event here let's say so we've got some arbitrary event here which is the chicken laid uh, n eggs we now view that as the entire probability space and we work out uh, what's the probability that y is equal to little y so of this probability space there's some subset of it which satisfies the condition that y is equal to that big y uh, that the number of eggs that didn't hatch is equal to little y uh, and we work out what the probability is relative to this entire probability space which is the conditional probability space on that um, on that event having happened and then to scale it back up into the whole probability space, we just have to multiply by the probability that big N is equal to little n. And again, remember that uh, big N uh, was this random variable assigning to each outcome the number of eggs the chicken had laid. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So every outcome in one of these events is going to be mapped onto a single value over here. And we were assuming that big N was Poissonly distributed uh, with a parameter lambda. So we can assume that this is equal to e to the negative lambda, uh, lambda to the power of n over n factorial. Okay, so now all we need to work out is what's the probability that big Y is equal to little y, given that big n is equal to little n. So let's say we have some fixed uh, value of eggs that she has laid, big n, and then we have this uh, random variable y, which is ascribing you the number of the eggs that did not hatch. But the number of eggs that did not hatch, big n, is just equal to... Um, it, well, it's just equal to y, um, the number of eggs, sorry, the number of uh, eggs that did not hatch is just equal to the number that she laid, which is little n, minus the number that hatched. And we worked out what the number that hatched last time were. Okay, uh, so uh, we should be able to get the pro probability that y is equal to little y from knowing what the P uh, PMF for little x is conditional on n having happened. So we know that the PMF uh, for little x, given that uh, let's say uh, big N is equal to little n, was equal to n choose x uh, times the probability uh, that a single egg hatches to the power of x uh, times the probability that an egg doesn't hatch to the power of n minus x. Okay? Uh, so what I should really write there is the probability that big Y is equal to little y given that uh, big N is equal to little n. Uh, that's going to equal uh, the... Um, probability uh, that uh, big X is equal to um, n minus y given that n is equal to little n. The reason being that if it's true that y of the little n eggs did not hatch, then it means that n minus y of them must have hatched. So uh, the probability of this event happening is exactly the same as this event happening. Any outcome which satisfies this condition is going to also satisfy this condition. So uh, we can just stick n minus y into this formula and we'll get n choose n minus y uh, to the power of uh, p to the n minus y uh, Q 
to the m minus m minus y, which will just give us q to the y. Okay, so there we have our conditional PMF, and again we can stuck, stick it into this formula now, and we get that the probability that big Y is equal to some little y is equal to the sum over n is equal to 0 to infinity. So this sum was over all partitions, but equivalent way of saying that was sum over all values of uh, little n that the chicken can lay. So over all little n values, times uh, this PMF here, conditional PMF, n choose n minus y, p to the n minus y, q to the y, times the probability that n is equal to big N to scale it back up into the entire probability space, and we get e to the negative lambda, lambda to the n over n factorial. Okay, uh, so uh, what I said was surprising about this result is that uh, these two random variables, big X and big Y, we're going to show that they are independent. So what we now need to do is calculate what the joint uh, PMF uh, for a random variable, uh, for this, um, for this, uh, the joint PMF of x and y is uh, for this probability space. So uh, remember, we have our probability space here, which is this chicken can lay any number uh, of eggs between uh, zero and infinity. So zero, one, two, etc. Any non-negative integer, and in each of these there are multiple outcomes. So the first one can hatch, and the second one cannot hatch. So these are the outcomes here, and these uh, sets of outcomes, these are events in the probability space, uh, the event that she lays a certain number of x. Okay, so what we now want to do is make a joint probability uh, probability mass function, which is the joint, uh, sorry, the, we want to make a joint random variable, x and y, uh, which is going to ascribe to each of these its x value and its y value. So we want to now know what is the probability that some big X is equal to little x and big Y is equal to little y. Okay, uh, well, uh, if big X is equal to little x and big Y is equal to little y, well, that means uh, that the total number of eggs she has because it's equal to the number of eggs she, uh, that, sorry, the total number of eggs she laid, sorry, uh, is equal to the number of eggs that hatched and then the plus the number of eggs that didn't hatch. So it's equal to x plus y. Uh, so firstly, uh, we um, know that uh, know that uh, this um, any um, outcome which satisfies this condition is going to be uh, within. Uh, let's say some little n which is equal to x plus y, so we'll say this is x plus y over here, uh, so it's going to be in here, and now what we're saying is we want x of the eggs to have hatched and y of the eggs not to have hatched. So what is um, what is the probability uh, that in here, uh, so if this so firstly, let's just work out what's the probability of getting this event here in the first place. So the probability of getting this event, the probability of being that she laid x plus y eggs in the first place is e to the negative lambda, lambda to the power of x plus y over x plus y factorial. So that's the chance that she had, that was the probability of her actually laying x plus y eggs in the first place. Now, uh, what we're saying is uh, if we want to work out the probability that uh, she is actually not just in there, but but actually hatched x of them and um, didn't hatch y of them, that's asking for a subset of this. So what we could do is work out the conditional probability uh, that she, um, what we could work out is the probability that x is equal to uh, little x and y is equal to little y, conditional on big N equaling x plus y. We could work out that, and then if we just times it by the probability that N is equal to x plus y, that would give us uh, the probability that x is uh, equal to little x and y is equal to little y, basically. Uh, the reason being, let me just get some more paper and explain why that is. Uh, we know, uh, back to basic definitions of um, of uh, conditional probability, that the conditional probability of an event A, given that B happens, is equal to the probability that A and B happen, divided by the probability that B happens. So in this case, what we're viewing, we're viewing the event A as being the event that x, the, big X is equal to little x and big Y is equal to little y. We're viewing event, so this is event A, and event B we're viewing as uh, little uh, big M being equal to x plus y. Uh, so if we want the probability that x is equal to little x and y is equal to little y, given that a, big N is equal to x plus y, 
that is equal to the probability of these two intersect. But that is use that the, well that that's degenerate information. If I put that in, the probability that big X is equal to little X and big Y is equal to little Y and uh, big N is equal to X plus Y. You don't need that. If these two are true, uh, then it's automatically within uh, this event. Basically, you cannot have X little X uh, little X eggs hatching and little y eggs not hatching and not have laid a total number of eggs x plus y so it's degenerate information saying that so that the probability of this one uh, this event intersect this event intersect this event is just the probability of this event intersect this event divided by the probability that big n is equal to little n so basically what i'm now saying is if i want the probability that x is equal to little x and y is equal to little y it's equal to the probability that x is equal to little x and y is equal to little y given that n is equal to x plus y times the probability that n is equal to little n well is equal to little x plus little y uh, okay uh, so uh, we know what this is this is given by that Poisson formula so the probability that big n is equal to x plus y is equal to e to the negative lambda lambda to the um, x plus y over x plus y factorial Okay, uh, we also know uh, we also know that uh, how to work this out here because what we're now saying is okay, um, we are in big N is equal to x plus y. We are now asking what's the probability that uh, if we look at this event here, if we look at this conditional, of, we are now thinking that uh, the event that she lays x little x plus little y eggs. We're now thinking of that as the entire probability space. Now if big X is equal to little x, that instantly tells us that big Y is equal to little y. So the, the fact that big Y is equal to little y becomes degenerate information. And if we want this probability here, this is just equal to the probability that big X is equal to little x, given that big N is equal to little x plus little y. Okay, uh, so what we can now just apply is the fact that we worked out ages ago now, uh, the, um, where is it, Up there, here, is the conditional uh, probability that x is equal to little x and it should have said given that n is equal to big n so this should have really said uh, big n is e given that big n is equal to little n I got sloppy with the notation because I was continuously saying we are now viewing this as the whole probability space so it was assumed that you understood that that was a um, conditional probability okay so we can now uh, put this in and it's x plus y choose little x times p to the power of little x times q to the power of x plus y minus little x, uh, which is just going to give us x plus y choose x, p to the x, q to the y. Okay, so if we now put all of this together, what we get is that the probability that big x is equal to little x and big y is equal to little y is actually equal to x plus y choose x times p to the x, q to the y. Okay, times, of course, times the Poisson bit, e to the negative lambda, lambda uh, to the, lambda to the, uh, what is it, lambda to the x plus y, uh, we're, we're just putting in this bit here, so it's the, uh, if n is distributed Poisson uh, with parameter lambda, uh, then we know the probability that big N is equal to little n is e to the negative lambda, lambda to the m, which in this case is x plus y, divided by x plus y uh, factorial. Okay, and what we now want to see is why uh, this is equal to the probability that x is equal to little x times the probability that y is equal to little y. So we want to show uh, that if we multiply the two, um, uh, these two, uh, the PMFs of the individual, um, individual, what we could say the marginal PDFs of the joint distribution together, that they give the joint PDF, uh, PMF. Okay, so we know that the marginal PDF of x, uh, that x is equal to some little x, is equal to the sum uh, from n is equal to 0 to infinity, n choose x, uh, p to the x, uh, q to the n minus x, uh, times e to the negative lambda, lambda to the n over n, oh, sorry, what's this? Where? Oh, yeah, sorry, n over n factorial, times uh, the sum, now the problem, oh, sorry, no, that's, that's, that's the P marginal PDF for x. The marginal PDF for y, then, is the probability that big Y is equal to little y, and we calculated this one as well. Where is it? Um, where did I put it? Uh, is it up here? No, it's not there. 
Uh, where is the marginal PDF for Y? Oh, it must be on the other side here. Ah, it's um, there. Okay, so is the sum n is equal to 0 to infinity, n choose n minus y, uh, then we got um, p to the n minus y, q to the n, p to the n minus y, q to the y, was it? q to the y? Yes, q to the y, and then e to the negative lambda, to the negative lambda, lambda to the n over n factorial. And in the next video, we will do the manipulation to show that uh, these two things multiplied together is equal to that.